Cordic method. It's an algorithm to compute signs efficiently on calculators. So in this video, we will share our understanding about this method. It makes more sense if you understand the hardware. A popular method to compute sign is through series expansion. It's based on calculus. I'll explain more in the upcoming calculus course. But right now, I will tell you how to use it. You need to first convert the degrees into radians, and then plug the radians into the formula to compute sine. For example, say we want to know sine 37 degrees. You divide it over 180, then multiply by pi. This is the 37 degrees in terms of radians. Then you plug into the series formula. You only need a few terms to get pretty good precision. It's roughly 0 0.6018. But such calculation involves lots of multiplications and also divisions. If you remember our lectures on multiplication, you probably realize it's a pretty complex operation. The way we handle it is through programming. So multiplication is a very expensive operation as compared to addition and subtraction. This method is not a big deal on a computer. But for simple calculators, computing resources are scarce, so people develop quartic algorithm to reduce the computing work. In a nutshell, although multiplications are complex, there is always a simplest one, that is, multiply by the base number. In our decimal system, Multiply by multiples of 10 is simple. You only shift the original number to the left. So for base 2 system, if you multiply by multiples of 2, then you need to shift the input to the left. For divisions, if divided by 2, you shift the input to the right. So quartic algorithm makes use of that trick. Now let's understand this method. Quartic stands for Coordinate Rotation Digital Computer. But how is sign related to coordinate in the first place? Sign is defined as the ratio of the two sides in a right angle triangle. Put it against a unit circle. Then the coordinates of the apex are the sines and cosines. So the job of finding the sines and cosines become finding the coordinates of a point on a unit circle. The reason it's called coordinate rotation is because it requires us to not to think of the angle as static, but as the end locations after a series of rotations achieved with these special angles. For example, if we want to calculate sine 30, which is the y coordinate of the point, we start from the horizontal line. Rotating by these special angles, note that they can be rotated forward or backward in order to get as close to 30 degrees. So we know the original location. Through the rotations, we track all these intermediate locations. This way, we're able to figure out the ending locations, and those are the sines and cosines. But how to do that exactly? and why these weird-looking angles. To understand this, you need to understand how the new location is related to the old one after one rotation. Say we know the original locations, they are the signs of the initial angle phi. Then rotating by theta, new locations are the signs of the combined angle. Remember this formula? They can be used to figure out the new locations. All you need is to replace the signs of the original angle in terms of the original coordinates. So this tells us that if we know the original coordinates, we know the signs of the rotation angle, then we can figure out the new locations. If we use cosine theta as the common factor and put it in the front, then the calculations involve multiplication of the tangent of the rotation angles. Now it makes sense to talk about these strange angles. They are chosen so that their tangents are the multiples of a half. So whenever you multiply by a half in base 2 system, you shift it to the right by one bit. 
So these multiplications become simple shifting. Here's the plan. Say this is the target angle. We can approximate through these angles by rotating either forward or backward. So we start with initial coordinates. Then we rotate by the first angle. This formula is used to calculate the new coordinates according to the initial one. Then we rotate by the second angle. The same formula is used, but the results from last time are used as prior one. Then the new coordinates are used to crunch the next one, and so on. Note that these rotation angles getting smaller, so as rotation goes on, we can hit the target angle with a desired precision. During each step, the calculation involves two multiplications. The first one is easy, because you just shifted to the right by one bit. But what about the second one? These cosine multiplications. There's a trick. We can skip the cosine multiplications during each rotation. Say we skip the first multiplication. What will happen? With each coordinate scaled by the same factor, 1 over cosine, we will arrive at a new point. Because they are scaled by the same factor, the new point lies at the same direction. So if we only carry out the first part of the calculation without the cosine multiplication, it's as if we're doing a scaled rotation. Now, if we use these scale coordinates as new inputs and skip the cosine multiplication, then we're doing another scaled rotation from x1, y1. The scaling factor is 1 over the cosine. Using this as the input to the next formula and skip the multiplication again, we did another scale rotation from x2, y2. So without the intermediate cosine multiplications, each step we're doing a scaled rotation. Since each step scales the coordinates by a factor of 1 over the cosine, in the end, we need to scale back all these cumulative factors by multiplying the last coordinates by the products of all the cosines. Know that these rotation angles are fixed, so you have to rotate by these angles. The only thing that's under your control is whether to rotate forward or backward. But because cosine is an even function, so cosine negative theta equals to cosine theta. So whether you rotate forward or backward, the product of all these cosines are the same. It can be pre-calculated and stored, so you can do one multiplication in the end to recover the target coordinates. You might wonder, can any angle be approximated by these special angles? And also how to implement quartic algorithm. In our Patreon video, we will demonstrate this method using Excel.